Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell. I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, and we are both club fitters at the Second Swing Minnetonka store. Today, we are going to be talking about club speed. Club speed, it's a debated topic. A lot of the times we've got golfers out there, the likes of Bryson DeChambeau, that can hit the ball super far because he has a lot of club speed. But is club speed everything, or is it just part of the puzzle? Well, we're gonna discuss club speed and what we focus on while we're fitting at second swing in the tour van while using TrackMan. So this is the first parameter that we focus on in a fitting. So Jackie, let me ask you, when you're trying to describe club speed to a customer, what do you first bring up? Well, club speed is essentially how fast you're swinging um, at the, you know, whether you're hitting driver, irons, wedges. So it's measuring how fast you're swinging, you know, right. easiest way to describe that. It's, it's potential distance. Yeah. So a lot of people think, if I swing faster, I'm going to hit the ball further. Well, yeah. most likely, yes. But if you don't find the middle of the club face when you're swinging faster, your efficiency gonna, is going to go down. So if that ball speed number or even the direction the ball is going when you're swinging faster, sometimes it's not worth it. Sometimes it's worth just hitting a smooth drive and just playing within your elements. One thing also to discuss with club speed is how it relates to ball speed and efficiency, so smash factor. One thing we have found out is not all launch monitors are the same. So TrackMan, for example, it measures club speed right at the moment of compression, so right at impact. If you do a fitting on, say, a Foresight GC Quad or something similar to that, they're actually going to be measuring club speed right before impact, so it's a little bit earlier in the swing. So a lot of times you will notice that club speed is going to be faster with a foresight unit, while club speed is going to be slower with a TrackMan unit. And that's going to influence smash factor. So with TrackMan with the driver, you can get up to a 1.50 smash factor. With foresight, usually 1.45 is where it tops out at. So there's a lot of debate about smash factor and club speed and ball speed, but really, you know, ball speed is number one but club speed is going to influence the potential to create more ball speed. So before we get started, we're, we're going to hit some shots today. Both Jackie and I, we're going to hit a pitching wedge, six iron, seven iron, and driver. We're going to talk about the averages, what, what, you, what your typical average is with regards to club speed. So let's talk about PGA Tour first. So the PGA Tour average club speed is 113 miles an hour with their driver. With their sixth iron, it's about 93 miles an hour or about 90 miles an hour with a seven iron. We go over to the LPGA Tour. The average club speed is about 94 miles an hour for the LPGA Tour. For a six iron, it's about 79 miles an hour or about 77 miles an hour for a seven iron. What's really interesting is the comparison to the LPGA Tour and your average amateur male. Your average amateur male also has a average club speed of around about 94 miles an hour. But you'll notice that these LPGA mm -hmm. ladies, they can hit the ball very far because they have a very good attack angle and a very good efficiency to hit the ball far. So yes, club speed matters, but also the way you deliver the golf club, that matters the most. Yeah, my uh, club speed with my driver is about 90 miles an hour. Um, and I see a lot of you know average male amateur golfers that you know are swinging probably 10 miles an hour faster than I am but can't hit it as far as I am because I'm making center contact so my ball speed is higher that's why I'm getting more distance because of that because I'm more efficient with my swing so I think you know we'll find out today a little bit about how much that matters and kind of how it relates to other pieces of the puzzle uh, when measuring on track man yeah, and we really appreciate having a tester like Jackie that has that average club speed close to what you're seeing with your average male golfer, and that's a lot of our viewers kind of fit into that category. So what we're going to do today is we're going to hit some shots with pitching wedge first. We're both going to hit and talk about the differences in our club speed and what that relates to with regards to distance. Then we're going to also hit a seven and six iron. The reason I want to hit both is because I want to talk about the difference between each club. Generally speaking, you're going to see a couple of miles an hour difference in your club speed as the club gets longer through your bag. And then we'll also hit driver. So driver, we'll talk about the differences. We said you're around about 90. I'm a little bit over 110 um, with my club speed. Sometimes I get a little faster uh, in, my, in my peak season. But we'll talk about the difference 
and what that relates to with regards to distance. Jackie, let's hit some shots. Let's go. Mm. That was a good swing. Yeah. You got two or they're around about 100. Yeah. Okay, Jackie, let's talk about numbers with your pitching wedge. So your club speed there was average of 69.7, so basically 70 miles an hour. And we'll notice your, your distance was about 101 yards. You told me that you hit your pitching wedge normally around about 100 yards, right? Yep. Very good. Yeah, so if you take a look at the ball speed and the smash factor number there, so ball speed, smash factor is ball speed divided by club speed, you're at 1.17. So if this club is designed to get up in the air, spin, and go just a certain yardage. Um, so we'll notice your club speed with pitching wedge is 69.7, ball's going 101 yards. Now it's my turn. I'm going to hit a couple of pitching wedges and we'll take a look at the differences. All right. There you go. All right. <laughs> so Thomas, right away, obviously your club speed's, you know, almost 14 miles an hour faster than me. Um, ball speed in relation to that, you know, well, what do we got here? 26 miles an hour faster than me. So obviously that's going to, you know, get you a little bit more distance. Um, so talk about, you know, usually what you're hitting your pitching wedge, how far you hit it in relation to what we got here. Yeah, so my numbers with pitching wedge is usually 140 yards is what I play it at. So those two shots that I just hit were at 140.2. So I'm very happy with that. Um, more club speed is going to equal more potential distance. Now with the wedge, you're not really trying to hit it super far. You're just trying to have it go a certain distance and gap adequately. But generally speaking, every mile an hour of club speed more is going to be maybe two to three yards more. So you mentioned my club speed was 14 miles an hour faster. So you times that by three, that's what, 42-ish yards? Which is about? Or, which is right around about that. So really interesting to see that difference right off the bat is about every mile an hour of club speed is about three yards. Mm. That was better. There we go. Might have got there. Okay, so uh, seven iron numbers for you, Jackie. We'll notice your carry there was 142.4, the total distance of 151.8. Pretty good numbers there for seven iron with club speed at 74.3 miles an hour. Yeah, honestly, a little bit farther than normal, but I've also been playing a lot of golf, so maybe it's that too, but. Um, yeah, typically my 7-iron is going to go carry about 140 is, is usually the number that I'm looking for. So, um, yeah, your efficiency was really good. You're at 1.38 with that, with that smash factor. So that tells me that you were really efficient at finding the middle of the club face, which is important because you mentioned club speed, potential distance. But where you catch on the face is really even more important. Yeah, I think for me, like where my, my club head speed is with you know, any of my clubs, I'm always looking to be efficient because of that. You know, I'm not swinging out of my shoes. So, you know, for me, my club head speed is kind of what it is at some, in some regards. So it's me trying to be the most efficient with that club head speed um, and making solid contact in the middle of the face is going to, you know, get me good results. Yeah. I think one thing that's interesting to bring up here is the carry distance is between my pitching wedge here and your, and your seven iron. We'll notice we're pretty close. You got me by about four yards on, on the carry distance. So why, why would that happen when you have a seven iron and I have a pitching wedge? Loft. Exactly, yeah. loft. Loft is going to cause the ball to spin more. So my pitching wedge spun about 2,600 RPMs more. And the loft, we'll have to take a look at the dynamic loft here, um, is going to be less with the seven iron versus uh, my pitching wedge just cause the ball to go further. So even though my club speed with my pitching wedge was still faster than your seven iron by 10 miles an hour, because you had less loft on that golf club, we're talking 
47 degrees aloft on my pitching wedge versus yours got probably about 30-ish degrees aloft yep. on your 7-iron. Um, loft is going to cause the ball to go further. And also the fact that golf shaft's just a little bit longer as well. Yeah, and that brings up interesting point too that I like to touch on is like, for me, my game in terms of where my club head speed is versus like you, right? You're gonna be able to launch it at that distance and stop it much sooner than I'm going to. Mine's gonna roll out a lot more, right? So right. when I'm talking about my distances versus what you would hit in that range of 140, to 150, somewhere in there, I'm playing it way differently than you would probably play it. So, and that is in relation to club head speed to some regard, because that's, because you're hitting it, you know, at a faster rate, you're gonna be able to launch it a little bit higher and stop it a little bit more, yep. so. And club head speed generates spin. Yep. So we take a look at the difference here when I was, with my spin 77, with the, with the loft as well, but 7700 versus 5100. Yeah. My ball stopped within about one and a half yards. Your ball stopped within nine and a half yards. Yeah. So stopping power is huge and that's where club speed does help with stopping power. Should be pretty close to 180. Yep. yep. All right. So Jackie, right before I hit, you asked me what my distance with my, my seven iron is. And I usually said well, between 178 and 180 for carry distance. We're right at 178.8 today, which is, which is good. It means my <laughs> numbers are, are pretty accurate. Uh, we'll take a look at my club speed, 89.7. So very close to 90 miles an hour with uh, my seven iron believe PJ Tour average is around about 90 miles an hour. So I'm, I'm pretty close there with regards to club speed numbers. Um, you notice the difference is spin. So if you take a look at the spin with my seven iron versus your seven iron, I spun the ball a little bit more because I had more club speed than you. Yep. Um, more club speed is going to equal more distance, more spin, more height. So if you take a look at the height that I hit my seven iron versus your seven iron, you can, you can notice that it's quite a significant difference there. And even looking at pitching wedge versus pitching wedge, there was quite a significant difference because there's more time for that ball to get up in the air and stay in the air. Yeah, and I think, you know, when taking a look at these numbers, and none of it shocks me in terms of what we're getting here from, you know, the results. So I, it speaks to, like, where my club head speed is versus yours, you know, um, just with 7-iron alone, cause seven iron is what we base a lot of our, well, it, it is what we base our fitting off of when we're talking about irons, right? So taking a look at mine, you know, the reason why I, for example, play graphite is to try and get a little bit more club head speed and a little bit more height, a little bit more spin. Um, whereas if I were to play a shaft like yourself, it would be like much lower, right? right. So for me, there's a lot of instances where this is showcasing why we would fit someone in a certain shaft or you know even, certain type of club head yeah, even head design or yeah. even talking about where and we're going to start a hybrid in the bag versus playing irons all the way through exactly it's going to be related to your club speed yeah yeah so what i want to try next is i also want to hit six iron so i want to see the differences between a seven iron and six iron club speed and see the difference i'm going to guess it's a couple miles an hour but it'll be interesting to see with your speed versus my speed if there's a big difference all right that was hit well. Yeah. Yep. Well, There's there you go. Ten yards. There you go. That's going to be pretty close. Okay, so Jackie, let's talk about the differences between the seven iron and the six iron. I guessed it was going to be around about two miles an hour. We'll notice we're at 2.2 .2 mile an hour difference between the seven iron and the six iron. Yeah. Why would there be more club speed with a six iron than a seven iron? Length. Right, it's half an inch longer. So every iron in your set is going to be half an inch longer. So your nine iron's gonna be half an inch longer than your pitching wedge. Your eight iron's gonna be half an inch longer than your nine iron as you go through the entire set. Cause that's designed to help with gapping and also comfort with regards to posture as well. Unless you're playing a one length iron set. Right. There it's that's gonna be a little bit different where you don't really change your ball position and the lie and loft is a little bit different. Um, but Generally speaking, yes, club speed about about two miles an hour, what we're seeing difference between the two with yours. 
we take a look, ball speed also went up because the club is longer. Um, we go over here, take a look at the right. Spin rate went down because there's less loft on the golf club. And you picked up about eight and a half yards of carry distance and about 11 yards of total distance. Yeah, that's about right. I mean, when I'm taking, you know, when I'm 150 yards out or 155, somewhere in there, that's going to be my six iron. Um, and it kind of depends on what type of shot I'm playing. With my longer clubs, I tend to like to play a little bit more of a draw. So obviously that's going to lead to a little bit more rollout um, and obviously more, a little bit more distance. But if I'm trying to reach more of that 150, 155, somewhere in there, I'll obviously, I'm going to try to play more of a fade because it's going to spin a little bit more. So I'm going to be able to stop it. So, I mean, that's pretty spot on of what the numbers I was expecting to see. All right, so let's take a look at my six iron numbers now and see if there's still that two mile an hour difference or if there's any more separation. All right. Yeah, I miss it that. All right, so my club speed looks like two mile an hour difference. So pretty similar. Yeah. It's probably just the length <laughs> of the golf club is just leading to that. Right. Yeah, we're talking 89.7 with the seven irons, 91.6 with the uh, six iron. I picked up four miles an hour more ball speed, and the ball spun less, and the ball went further by about 15 yards. You would notice the difference though, you know, notice once I start hitting a club with less loft on it, that release is more because there's less spin, so the total distance started getting further and further apart because there's less spin on the club. Right. Okay, so. Driver, let's take a look at those driver numbers before we finish up here and see what your driver speed is at, my driver speed, and we'll talk about ways for golfers to increase their driver speed. All right, let's go. That's a good start. Yeah, smoke that one. Yeah. 244. That sounded pretty good. Yeah. Okay, nice. here we go. Okay, Jackie, 90.3 club speed. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's average for me. Um, that's always what I'm aiming for right there is to be in that 90 mile an hour window. Um, typically, if I'm trying to swing faster, it usually doesn't end well. So if I'm s staying in that range, I know I can be really efficient uh, with contact as well. So, yeah. uh, and well, that's pretty average for me. I mean, total distance, 240, 245 is like perfect, so. Yeah. And that's very good for 90 miles an hour club speed. Yeah. We, I talked about like LP, LPGA averages 94 miles an hour. And obviously they're, they're working out all the time. They're, yep. they've got, you know, they're, they're training for club speed there too. But the fact that you can still hit the ball 244 yards with only 90 miles an hour club speed just shows efficiency is really good. So you notice your smash factor at 147. And I want to touch on that attack angle, we know it is 4.4 up. That's how you hit the ball far. Yep. Yeah. It's just <laughs> comes down to efficiency, middle of the face, and attack angle. And if you deliver a square club face as well, it's going to go far and it's going to go straight. Yeah, I think one thing to touch on too with like, you know, club head speed with my driver in particular, I've noticed that like when I've tried to like increase my club head speed, and again, you know, I'm not training every day to, to do this, <laughs> yep. but when I've been working on my club head speed, I've noticed that as I've tried to increase it, I've, my attack angle's gone down actually. So I'm like almost trying too hard to the point where I'm hitting down on it, which is I'm getting like almost 15 yards less than I normally would. So, so you would say that trying to swing out of your shoes sometimes doesn't work out efficiently. Exactly. And I tend to hook the, you know, hook the crap out of it. It's going way left. So, yeah. you know, you notice that like, as I've gone from like my pitching wedge and up, I've had, you know, I'm more left of center and that that's on purpose for me because I'm, because my club head speeds at 90 miles an hour, I'm trying to hit more of a draw, get the spin down a little bit to get a little bit more distance in my clubs. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm playing that as I'm out there, like that I'm going to hit more of a draw. And the faster you swing, the further the ball can go offline right. too. And exactly. it's, just, it's easier for the ball to go offline. Uh, just before we hit my drives, I thought it was interesting just to bring up club speed numbers are 
almost the same as my six iron numbers, but we touched on this before, the loft is going to be the, the big difference. So six iron loft for me is about 30 degrees. You got a 10 and a half degree driver, right? Yep. And we'll notice the spin rate. So that's gonna cause the ball to chase out quite a bit further, attack angle, spin rate. Um, yeah, very interesting that my ball speed's almost the same, a couple miles an hour less, but the spin because of the loft on the club. Okay, finish up. I wanna hit a couple drives uh, and see what my club speed is at today. And then we'll finish up talking about ways to increase club speed. All right. Maybe. Good one. All right, Thomas, so club head speed for your driver, 111. Is that pretty typical that you would see that club head speed? Yeah, I've been ranging 110 to, I've, I've got to close to 114, 115 this year. Um, we're shooting this video earlier in the mo morning and I feel like my body seems pretty tight and sore. I've been moving some carpet around <laughs> recently, so that definitely is going to influence the, the club speed. But still 111, I'm very happy with that because I was still very efficient with my swing. Uh, what, what was that about? We're talking 21 miles an hour, more club speed. Okay, what did I say the, the ratio was before? Every mile an hour of club speed is how many yards? Three, three yards. Yeah. yeah. So three yards. So if we take a look at that, my total distance was 312. What was your total distance? 244. Yeah, so we're very close there with regards to dif difference in distance based on the club speed that I was generating. Um, we take a look at other things that can really influence a little bit more distance, attack angle. Notice I hit up on the wall seven degrees. Yeah. It's very high. Yeah. But notice the spin rate stayed down. So high launch, low spin, with a lot of club speed is a way to hit the ball far. Well, and, and what degree driver do you have, too? Yeah, so I have nine. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a ten and a half. Yeah. So loft is also, I mean, the lowest amount of loft you can play on the driver is going to cause more ball speed. More ball speed is going to be the actual distance. But you got to hit the ball straight, and you got to be able to control it as right. well. Yeah, I played around with eight. I could not hit it straight. Yeah. I go to ten, I could hit the ball straight, but it's a much higher spinning a shot. Nine for me has just been on the money. Well, I think that's a huge note as well. Like typically, the more club head speed you have, the more the less loft you're going to have in your driver. I mean, it's right. typically going to be that way. Now, that doesn't mean it's always the rule of thumb, but you know, usually if you're having more of a club head speed around like where I'm at, you're going to typically play a ten and a half just so that you can see that more efficiency. And also, more loft is a little bit more forgiving too. So. Um, I've had, I've had people that I'm fitting where, you know, they might be at like closer to 100 miles an hour, but I give them a nine degree head and it's just like all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something to note too. Typically club head speed has somewhat to do with where you're going to be in loft as well uh, with the driver. It's, it's very important. I'm, I mean, generally speaking, the slower your club speed, the more loft you need to get the ball up in the air to cause spin on the ball. Spin is going to give you control. Yep. And it's important. You want to hit the ball straight. If you have too little spin, you're going to get like a little knuckleball effect and it can dive out of the sky and go offline a lot, e a lot faster. Yeah. And that's why I don't play a nine degree head because <laughs> that's what it, it just, it goes really low. And I mean, it might roll out far, but I can't control the thing. So, right. Okay. So finally, uh, how have you done any speed training at all to try and work on your club speed or? Um, I, I don't use speed sticks or any of that. I probably should. Uh, but yeah, I know this is something that you've been working on, uh, with speed training. Um, you know, for me, I'm a pretty busy individual with coaching and all that stuff too. So I, I would personally, I, I know I could gain a lot more from doing it. So I'm interested to see what you say about the speed training that you do. Yeah. I mean, there was a series this last year of me doing the, the super speed training system. And while I was doing it, I noticed I picked up six, seven miles an hour more club speed at the peak of doing it. Now I didn't keep up with it. And I slowly started to see my numbers slowly kind of go down. Yeah. If you keep up with it, if you do this, the, the speed training over speed training, 
you are going to get club speed, but you have to keep up with it. Yeah. What else can cause uh, club speed? Well, just pure strength. Yeah. If you're a strong individual, if you're a taller individual, you can also generate club speed. Yeah. Now, I weigh 165 pounds, I'm 5'9", I don't have that much muscle on me. Mine is just pure hip rotation and me swing at it as fast as I can to generate the club speed. There may be some golfers that look more natural, look like they're not even going after it very hard and their club speed can be 110, 115 yeah. miles an hour just because they're taller and stronger. Yeah, so I, I get the comment all the time because I'm 5'4", you know, 140 pounds, like I'm pretty small. So when talking about, you know, how far I do hit the ball for where I'm at, like I always get, wow, you hit the bar, you know, hit the ball far for your stature. And, and for me, it's all about hip rotation uh, and flexibility. I think flexibility is a huge thing. Yep. The more flexible you are um, and working on that, j not just, you know, club head speed training, but the flexibility in golf is huge. The more flexible you are, the more power you're going to gain, uh, more hip rotation you're going to have. So, you know, for me, I think that's my main thing. I always got to make sure I stretch out and I'm doing, you know, all, all of those things as well to really be able to get that power. Um, Cause I hit it farther now than I did when I was in college. And a lot of that is just repetition and knowledge that I'm gaining as I get older too. So, yeah. And I've noticed I've hit the ball a lot further myself in the last couple of years. I've had access to all the track man data and club speed. Right. Yeah. It's slowly gone up, but it hasn't been a dramatic increase. And a lot of it comes down to efficiency. So what I'm saying is yes, if you can do the overspeed training, if you've got time, do your squats, do your workout, do your flexibility. That's all going to help. I think working out is probably going to be more efficient in the long term. This is going to help. But at the end of the day, if you're able to find the middle of the club face, give yourself a very efficient swing with a square club face, that's really what matters the most is hitting the ball further by getting more ball speed, but also in the ball straight. Yeah. So club speed is not everything, but it's one of the most important things to generate more speed if you're trying to hit the ball a lot further. Exactly. So if you're watching this video today, I do highly recommend speed training, over speed training. I also recommend working on your, your balance, your fitness, um, your strength. Um, but also, end of the day, make sure you keep working and pay attention to your golf swing because if you are swinging faster, the ball can go much further offline there too. So. I hope you really enjoy this content. We're going to be doing a whole TrackMan series on all the different parameters that we focus on in club fitting. Club speed is number one. It's the first thing we talk about. There's a whole bunch of other different things we focus on. Stay tuned for that and also subscribe to our channel so you can see more of it.